Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into today's message. Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving for the word today. And we, we, we reach into the word of faith by the Holy Spirit. Mm, mm. Oh, thank you, Father. There is at hand today, saith the Lord, a time approaching those days of the end that there never has been a time like it before and never will be again. And this time is the time just before that when you're beginning to see its earmarks in the earth. It is no time to be slothful. It is no time to be backwards and timid concerning the things of the Spirit and concerning the things of this life. This is the time to engage, develop, strengthen your faith, strengthen your place in the kingdom of God, and know for a surety that I am Lord over all of these things that are going on in the earth and that I always cause you to triumph and I will always give you the victory. But the connection to triumphant victory is always faith. Listen and obey, saith the Lord. Whoa, glory. Wow. Oh, Lord, thank you, sir. Yeah. Ah, wow. we praise you and bless you. Thank, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Glory. Whoa, Keith. Sounds like Amen. this is right on. This is the time, isn't it? Yes, sir. This is the time. Um, the earth is in the most dangerous place it's ever been. It's, of course, it's the oldest it's ever been. And it, uh, the whole creation is groaning and travailing, crying out for a manifestation of the sons of God because we're the ones that have the force of faith and the blessing of the Lord, which is supposed to replenish the earth. But not only that, it's the most dangerous place anybody to live. Mm. And to, to do what we need to do right now, you, you faith, you faith. I, don't care how, I don't care if you've been living by faith every day in life for 50 years, 60 years, 70, 80 years, I don't care. It, listen, it is time to get it stronger. It's time to, it's time to spend every thing you need to do to build it, strengthen it, develop it, learn, get insight and ideas and concepts from God about this life. Well, one of the things the Holy Ghost said right there was, and we talked about it a couple of days ago on this broadcast, be not slothful. Yeah. Yes, sir. I heard it. Yes, sir. Okay, don't be lazy about this. Follow them who through faith and patience inherit my promise. Praise God. We have to really get up on this this issue of living by faith because of the time in particular, always it was necessary. But in the times that we are about to face, praise God, walking by faith is absolutely required. So we've been talking about what? Uh, the just shall live by faith? To, yes, sir. Amen. And we found out that faith, man, is the channel to get into the very grace of God. Uh, amen. We can't be slothful about that. And then we were looking at yesterday what the Lord Jesus had to say about how things work. And it was two things he was telling us, I, I think, in, in particular about it. One was to know how you stop yourself in your faith. And the second one was to know your enemy and his tactics. And of course, we found out yesterday that how we stop ourselves is a wayside seed here from Mark chapter 4 over mm -hmm. there, sower sows the word. Wayside seed was somebody that didn't receive the word when they heard it. So they close their ears to it. Any area in your life where you got off limits to God, you are a wayside seed right there, and he changed that. And the second one was, 
we've, we've found out that uh, people who wound up being offended, uh, there were two tools that Satan used. One was affliction or pressure, testing trials. Mm -hmm. And the answer to that was the joy of the Lord, glory oh, yeah. to God and faith and patience. The second one here was a, was a persecution. And persecution is the same when you look at the Greek word. It's also pressure, but it's through people. Satan will use people at the point of his spear to try and jab at you. All to do what? Stop the word because faith comes from the word. He understands on Persecution we can... is not to make you stronger. It's not to teach yes, you something. Right. Now, you can learn in it, and if you respond right, you'll get stronger, but it wasn't the persecution that did it. It's the Word of God that did it. Absolutely, it's the Word of God that Amen. did it. Amen. So the answer to it, because each one of these, and I, I, number one's affliction, number two is persecution. Uh, of course, we're not talking about two self-inflicted wounds that we put on ourselves. But number two that Satan uses, there's persecution. And the answer to persecution is what? Walk in love. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Love never fails. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, do what Jesus said. Jesus said four things you got to do in Matthew chapter 5. Man, let's go over there for, for a second. Just uh, quickly take, take, take a look at that. He said well, there was four things you got to do. So know yourself, know your enemy. If you're, going, if you're going to walk by faith, understand what these traps are. He said in verse 44, four things. I say unto you, love your enemies, number one. Bless them that curse you, number two. Do good to them that hate you, number three. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Well, loving your enemies, I, I think most folk kind of got a little handle on that, even though they may not like it, but they kind of know what it is. Uh, but that bless them that curse you. And that, I was looking at that Greek word bless, and it means to speak well of them. Talk good about your enemy. Whoa. <laughs> then the third one he said was, do good to them that hate you. And, and that's an action verb. And, uh, and, and actually wants you to go out and do something for them. I'll tell you what happened to me. When, when, uh, when uh, my original church, Word of Faith, was founded and we, we were going after our very first building. And uh, we were believing God for it. And we were uh, we had, had our little tiny little church and it was less than 200 people. And uh, we were believing for a certain amount of money for this building. In the middle of it, uh, uh, part of my staff pulled out and split the church. Right in the middle of it. Okay, the church only a few months old. Split it right down the middle. Okay, and walked off with it. You know, we're a good portion of it. So I said, well, all right. Uh, I preach this stuff. I got to do it. So I'm going to let it go. So I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to whatever. And the Lord said to me, no, you didn't do, do what I said. But he said, I want you to receive an offering for these poor people. He said, I want you to go over there and I want you to bless them with it. I want you to hug their neck and I want you to tell them that you love them. And it popped out my mouth. I thought about it. I said, Lord, you're going too far. <laughs> do what? Because we had to have this money by a certain amount of time or else we lose that. Not only that, the little storefront building we were at, the lease was out on that same day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm 24 years of age. This is my first assignment. So I didn't want to hear that. It was almost wayside seed there. But I finally got, got to it. All right. So I received an offering. Wouldn't you know, it would be the, one of the largest offerings the church ever had oh, well, for my enemy, right? <laughs> so, so I received an offering. I went on over there to where they, where they were. When I walked through the door, my, my fist balled up. I mean, my flesh just was, you know, just, oh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, so, so, I walk, <laughs> so I walk over there, man. I take this check out, and I bless him with, I, and I bless him with this check. Well, not. You know, your, your flesh is saying, well, when you do that, you know, they're going to go, oh, well, you know, we, yeah, yeah well, we shouldn't have done this this way and, you know, so forth so on, right? And be some kind of record. No, they just took that check, put it in their pocket, and looked at me, stood at me. And my flesh said, no, they didn't. No, they didn't just take that check. <laughs> and I heard the Holy Ghost say, go on, finish what I told you to do. So I hugged their neck and told them I loved them by faith because it was definitely only by faith <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Amen. I loved them by faith and left. Let me tell you what happened. 
when I deal with the Lord said, do here. Of course, and we prayed for some people and did everything else. On the day that we had to have the money, we were $30,000 short. And I was in a little storefront that, and then when I say storefront, we had no carpet. We didn't have chairs with pads on it. We didn't have any air conditioning. I mean, all the ladies came into church. I don't care what kind of hairstyle they had. At the end of the day, they all left the same way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Amen. We had nine parking spaces. It's a little flower shop today. Yeah. That morning, with thirty thousand dollars short, and I'm doing everything I know to do that I learned from Dad Hagen. I'm shouting. I'm speaking the word. I'm, I'm doing everything I can do. You know, I'm keeping my head from going tilt. Remember now, I'm just kid. Just get started. Then the phone rang. So I went over and picked the phone. Back in them days, they didn't have cell phones, you know. Then I picked up the phone. Well, they did, but they were like that big, and they cost yeah. like, <laughs> you know what they cost. They so right. so, so I, I, I picked up the phone, and it was a man on the line. He had visited the church a couple of times, and he said, the Lord told me to come by. Well, I'm in the middle of this crisis going on right now. I don't need to be some counseling session, but I said, come on anyway, you know, and I went back to the little storefront and doing whatever. Well, 10 minutes later, the guy shows up. He comes in, he's carrying a big black checkbook. And he says, I am the senior partner at XYZ Law Firm. He said, and the Lord told me to come by, and he opened the checkbook, and he signed the check and said, and, and for you to fill in whatever amount you needed, Whoa, it was $30,000. Now, this is we're talking about 1981. So you know what $30,000 was like in 1981 to a little storefront church? Oh, yeah. Oh, my, my. <laughs> I feel that in, man. And praise God, we closed that deal. And that was our very first building that we had uh, at Word of Faith. Well, praise God. The answer to persecution is to do these things that the Lord Jesus said. Now, you know, Keith, I'm, I'm totally convinced of this, but after uh, experiencing this kind of life for as long as I have, that God already had that man in his plan. He, uh, he's, he's talking to this man. He's dealing with him before this other thing ever, ever happened. But the thing that kept that split from working and stopping what God planned to do financially, because that's what that split was, was designed to do, was to break this thing up and stop this little word of faith church before it can get off the ground. But because you obey God and you just, you just kept steady and just stayed on the word and just kept doing it, like it or not, I'm committed, man, and just do it like God told you to do it. Then he was able to do what he already planned to do anyway. It was all by faith. Yes, sir. I had yeah. the one, I, that wasn't that, that type of deal, but it was another thing that uh, uh, the Lord told me to do, and I did it and went on and didn't think any more about it and where I'm, the Lord just had me give something to somebody and I went on my business. Years later, he said, I, 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 I want you to see something. If you hadn't obeyed me back there then, I could not, I would, could not have done what I just did for you, which was a wonderful thing that we had just experienced. He said, I could not have done that if you hadn't obeyed me back there. He said, these things, the, the body of Christ is sewn together like a fabric. And he said, there, there, there are spiritual ties to incidents and, 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 and uh, times of obedience. And he said, there's also ties to times of disobedience. But he said, the way you, way you keep your garment intact is you repent and sew it back up <laughs> before, you, before you have time to tear the thing apart. This is just huge information, man. Uh, absolutely. And so, uh, so when we talk about living by faith, living 
or faith for life, living by faith or faith for life is a faith life, is a patience life, it's a love life. Uh, and is that acting on what Jesus said life every day. And so we have been doing this. And so actually, I really didn't change anything that we had been doing all along. The only thing was that when, when Satan brought this tactic, we didn't fall for it. The word of the Lord came unto us about, about what to do and mm -hmm. clarified it for us oh, better. Yeah. And the word of the Lord came up. And then, but we had to act on the word of God. And of course, faith is also acting on the word. You know, when uh, the, uh, a member of the United States Senate um, set, a, set in motion a situation that was re really tough. And you went, you went right hand I in hand talk, with I me right, him, right yeah. all the way through that whole thing. Yeah. Well, uh, at, at first it was, it was such a blind side that, it, you know, it uh, spiritually kind of caught me off there for a while. So I had to inquire of the Lord, how do I, how, how do, what do I do here? How do I respond? I know what, I know the principles. I know what I have to do here. Because if I don't, my first words must be right on. I can't afford to step out and, because, and, and follow my flesh and that kind of thing because it's, it's a major attack. Mm. So uh, I'm inquiring of the Lord and just what you were describing there, what do I do here? How do I, I know what the Word says about it and I want, I'm going to accomplish this that Jesus said that I must do. But now, how do I go about doing that? Now, I said all that to say this, in the process of that and in the process of praying, listening to God, because this thing went on for months and, um, and walking in it each step, each time, there was uh, uh, an area that I realized I only understood about half of this. Uh-huh. Here's something that I was not doing that I, I kept getting a uh, leading to doing. I said, well, Lord, you, you know, because of this scripture here, I, 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 I don't, uh, I hesitate to do that. I, that don't seem right to me. But he took me over into another scripture and broadened my knowledge of what to do in a situation like that. It changed my uh, my my whole attitude about the thing. And by doing so, he was able to show me the very thing that just stopped it. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Praise God, and it is stopped. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it God. just stopped it. Yeah, hallelujah. And, um, and I, I've, it is still in front of me today. I know in the name of Jesus, I will become good friends with that man. Praise God. I will. So it. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, amen. So, so uh, of course, walking by faith, Satan's affliction, persecution, there was three left. Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and lust of other things. And that word, merimna, care, means what? Distractions. Okay. Distractions of this age. Distractions of this world. Yeah. Keeping you distracted so that you don't live by faith. Well, of course, there's an answer to each one of these. So, so what's the answer then to cares of this world of being distracted? Colossians 3, 1, set your affections or set your mind yes, sir. on things above, not on the things of the earth. That's the same thing he told Joshua. Mm -hmm. You get your mind on this. You don't talk about, he, he's 24 hours from combat. Mm -hmm. right. And the last time his eyes where on that land is full of giants and high walls. Now he hasn't been back over there since. So the image that he has of where he's going is up against really big people and big high walls. He can't afford to be thinking about that. 
And so God told him, no, no, no. You don't think about nothing but me. You understand here, kid? <laughs> you thinking about me. You keep your mind. I'm the giant here. You keep your mind off those people. You meditate on this day and night, and you will observe. You'll see how to do everything that's written in it. Yeah. Now, that's exactly what, that's, that is exactly what we're talking about here. Right, and the key to it was to meditate in the word day and night, which means saying that word, imagining that word, yes. roaring that word, shouting that word, all that's in that Hebrew word there. All that is fixing yeah. your attention, your affections. Right. And uh, that, that's talking about meditating on, on heaven, meditating on, on those things that are above. And you can come to the point where it's, it's like you're there already. Now that's what happens when people play video games night and day and get so absorbed in them week after week, month after month after month, don't do anything else, just shoot and kill and shoot and kill and bleed and die and, and, and all that. You, Satan can get so a hold of, of a person that's doing that, that they begin to act out and do things thinking they're in a video game. Yeah, we've seen it recently. Yes, we have. Yes, sir. Well, he could have, that's not anything new with him. I mean, he's just warping something God already has. We can meditate on the things of God and the kingdom of God. So he's meeting our needs according to his riches in glory. We've been lifted up to sit with him, and it's like we're already there instead of being in this terrible, dangerous world. We're functioning in the kingdom of God. Well, living by faith, something you said a minute ago was really key to it, and that was your first words about the situation, what they're going to be, because faith for life means this is a person who doesn't speak rashly or in a hurry. He is slow to speak someone that operates in a lifestyle of faith. The Lord shared it with me this way. Now remember when you were a kid and you were growing up and you used, used to get cool points, or style points for being able to uh, say, give a quick retort to somebody. You know, our kids would say stuff and somebody said them back and other kids go, ooh. You know, you, you can say something real, real quick. And so we were raised with giving instant retorts, but the Lord, the Lord was sharing, was sharing with me. No, what you do, you don't have to answer something to me. Said, just wait and get before me and find out what words you're supposed to say. Mm. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Keith and I will be back in just a moment. Those who know how to walk by faith are the ones who will experience victory during these difficult and dangerous times. Be prepared for the days ahead with the Faith and Revelation Package, two new books by Bishop Keith Butler. Faith for Life will teach you why faith is a lifestyle and the answer to overcoming every challenge. Discover why Abraham is the pattern for keeping your faith strong and on track. Accomplish your purpose in life. Live by faith. Experience hope, victory, and the blessing God has for you. In the Revelation of Jesus Christ, Bishop Butler goes through the book of Revelation chapter and verse, sharing insights into God's message of love and the victory that's ahead for the church. It's time to get ready for Christ's return. There is no middle ground. Keep your faith strong and be an overcomer. Go all in for God and discover your part in these end times. Be prepared for the days ahead. Order the Faith and Revelation package at a special price of only $25.99. Go to kcm.org slash TV special, call toll free 1-800-600-7395 or write to us today. These two books by Bishop Keith Butler will help you live by faith and experience victory during difficult and dangerous times. For an additional 10% off, order your Faith and Revelation package online. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to change that right now. Don't go another minute without having him in your life because that's the only way you can possibly be prepared 
for what's on this earth now and what's coming in the near future. You need to choose God and stay on his side. Now, listen to this. Acts 2.21, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, let's go over here to the book of the Roman. It, Romans, if in chapter 10, verse 9, if you shall confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the way you call upon the name of the Lord uh, in salvation. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, you pray this with Brother Keith and I right now. Pray it out loud, you, loud enough you can hear it with your own ears. If you're someplace where you can't do that, then just whisper it. And, and it's, it, this is important. The most important thing you could ever possibly do. Oh, God in heaven, I believe with all my heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead. I call upon your name, sir. Come into my heart. I repent of sin. I renounce the past. And I receive you as my future, sir. I give you my life. And I receive your life. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. I believe I receive my supernatural prayer language, my supernatural praise language, just like in the book of Acts. I praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that with us today, you are a born again, child of God, if you earnest and sincere when you pray. Now, I want to send this to you free and postpaid, this little book called He Did It All For You to help you get started reading your Bible. I mean, this is important every day. That's what we've been talking about on this broadcast. And, and it, the Bible is not difficult and hard to understand. And these little, two little brochures will help you do just that very thing. We love you. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Remember that Jesus is Lord. Learn more about beginning your new life in Christ Jesus. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org. Jesus did it all for you. It's time to receive his love and live the abundant life God provided for you. For additional teaching and free information on salvation, go to kcm.org.